I think obviously with a lot swirling around with uh, Jack and a couple of days ago, um, his, his uh, press conference, probably best if I just uh, you know, address that situation, then I'm certainly happy to take a lot of questions um, on any different topic that you guys want to discuss as we kind of wind down our season and head into the off season. So, you know, before I <clears throat> kind of go through the Jack situation, I do want to drive a point on that's critically important. We, we all want the same thing here when it comes to Jack Eichel. We want Jack Eichel to be healthy, um, to be able to play at the top of his game and to be one of the best players in the world like he's proven he is. So we all want the same thing here. And I think if I kind of back up a little bit and first talk about, you know, what ended up being Jack's last game in the season after that, um, Jack was quickly imaged. Our doctors uh, diagnosed uh, Jack with a herniated disc in his neck, as you know, discussed kind of the next steps from there being um, conservative care, kind of rehab treatment um, with the hopes that, you know, he would be able to go through that process and return to play this season. Uh, not, not long after that, Jack um, discussed and asked about a second opinion, which um, is within his rights. And I totally support and as an organization, we, we, we support it. Um, I think as a side note, any time a player in any medical situation wants to get another opinion, I think it's great. The more information, the better. Um, and that's what he did. Another probably point I want to drive home that through this process from what I just laid out until where we are today, there has been constant communication, constant communication from myself to Jack, uh, our organization to Jack's agents, uh, doctors to Jack, uh, doctors to doctors. Some of the uh, communication's been formal where we've all been together, bigger meetings. Some of it's been phone calls. Some of it's been Zoom. Uh, some of it's been more kind of one-off, but it has been constant and continuous communication from the beginning with all parties. And what was agreed upon um, by the doctors, the experts, um, was conservative rehab approach. And our doctors are highly regarded in the medical industry. Um, they are exceptional in what they do. They are the doctors of the bills, the savers. Um, you guys that are local on this call know many of these names of, of who's involved with us. And these are experts. And all of the doctors involved agreed on the conservative approach. So what what we were discussing and what was mentioned to me and those of us in the organization that were involved was that typically in this situation and in their experience, there's a high probability that through a conservative rehab approach, you are able to avoid surgery and you are able to come back and perform um, at the top of your game. And that is what everybody agreed upon. And that's the hopes that we all still have. What I want to make sure you all understand is we're still in that window. What was discussed is that kind of a 12 week mark, which takes us to the end of May, early June kind of time frame, And that's where we still are at. So we're still in a, currently in that conservative kind of rehab process. Um, I think you could all appreciate that everyone wants to avoid any type of a surgery and for whether it's anyone off the street or an accountant or certainly a professional athlete, um, you know, a conservative approach is the best approach with the hopes of avoiding any type of surgery. Now, it's been speculated and, and discussed from Jack's camp about potentially having a surgery that's never been done on a National Hockey League player before. Our doctors aren't comfortable with that. But I think we all are in a position where we want the same thing and hope that when we re-image this um, in the timeline that I laid out, uh, Jack will have, have made steps and strides to be in a position where um, we're in a better spot. And that's, that's really kind of brings you guys up to speed. I'm not going to get into a lot more, but that really kind of gives you all the information of where we're at. Um, and I think it's just another to drive the point home again. We all want to see Jack healthy. We all want the same thing. Um, and there's been continuous, constant communication through this entire process. Hi there, Kevin. Obviously, there's, uh, shall we say, a lot to digest there. Um, given what's been out there and what you just said, 
And certainly, as I'm sure you saw, given Jack's reaction on Monday, the face of the franchise is very upset and not happy with his organization. Um, how surprised are you by Monday's comments? Is the relationship irreparable, and has he asked you to trade him? Uh, well, I guess if on the trade front, I know it's probably been one of those things I've been asked every time I've had a press conference and I've given the same answer. And if you're asking me if he's asked since um, the last time we talked or since Monday, the answer is no. Um, and um, Jack and I have been, as I mentioned, um, continuously talking through this process. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're talking about a young um, professional athlete that wants to be healthy and wants to, wants to play and wants to win. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to put words in Jack's mouth or why he reacted the way he did on Monday or why there was emotion there. Um, but I, I'll flip it around on a positive note to say, we want, we want players and people in this organization that are passionate, that want to, that want to win and that want to be here and are excited to put this Jersey on and, and make this city proud. You know, I've talked to you guys about this before there, the disconnect in my mind right now is from our team to our fan base in our city and making this organ, making the people of this community proud. And I understand what that means. And that's something that I think about every day. And I'm extremely focused on where we go from here and less focused on the past and the past 10 years. Um, you certainly can learn from it, Mike, but I'm, I'm focused on solutions and I'm focused on the proper conversations to, to point this uh, franchise in the right direction. Hey, Kevin, um, Sean Worrell, just wondering uh, what concerns do you have though when three of your leaders including, you know, Reinhardt and, and Rasmus was the line and who said, I'm open to anything, um, seem to express some discouragement after, you know, missing the playoffs and how this season ended. And so what, what does that say about the team's leadership core going forward when it has reservations about where the, the, the direction is for this franchise right now? Yeah, John, it's, a, it's an interesting question. And, and, you know, I've obviously been thinking about this a lot in the last um, couple of days and had all of my exit meeting uh, interviews uh, where every, every player came through and met with the coaching staff and then myself and Jason Carmano separately. Uh, and what I do want to tell you is um, the young players yesterday, the meetings, I, I was energized. I was excited. We have a tremendous young core of players that truly care about this team and this organization and this city. And I, I was extremely impressed on how um, honest and mature this group was, you know, and you can ask me about the different players, but it was, you, you guys know, it's a big, it's a big young core. So well, the names you brought up, you know, you have to think about a little what they've been through. And I understand that, but we can't live there, John. We have to think about what's gone on. And, and we, then we have to think about how we get better and move forward. I want players waking up every day thinking about how can I be the best version of myself? How can I help this franchise go to the right, right way? And certainly not going to um, back down from that. And I can think if you would ask any player in this team over the course of the year, and granted it was a tough year with the COVID protocols, but I asked a lot of questions. I was, I was talking to players continuously. I was around and um, having those conversations and having honest ones. And I understand there's, a, there's, there's players and you want to say, you know, veteran type players that have been through a lot here. Understood. But we are going to get this right with the people that want to be here. Kevin, if some of the established talent here does get traded or whatever this offseason, are you confident those young guys like Dylan Cousins and Rasmus Dahlin and whoever else are ready to assume a bigger, larger leadership role and become really the core of the team? Yeah, it's a slippery slope, right, Bill? It's a, there's a trajectory that none of us can predict. Um, it's never a straight line up. Uh, when it comes to the development side of the game, um, you can get fooled in thinking someone's ready and maybe they have a dip and then boom, they come back up again. Um, so it's, 
So I think there was a lot of positives out of the young players games that we saw on an individual um, basis later in the season. You know, I, I really have to single out a, a Casey Middlestat and what, what I saw from him. Um, I'm not sure if he shared this with you guys, but I challenged Casey before the season to prove it and to, to earn a spot and to show what he's capable of doing. And, and all he did was show up from day one of training camp with a great attitude and put the work in. Um, and then when he did get the opportunity, he kicked the door open. So I'm comfortable and confident that we have a core of young players that are, that aren't just scratching the surface of kind of, of who they are. They've been in the league a little bit, you know, so they're starting to identify what it takes to succeed. I mean, Make no mistake, too, day after day playing the matchups that our young players were playing against the, the Bostons and Washingtons and Pittsburghs, I mean, it's, uh, it, 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 you had to grow up quick. So I take comfort in that. But what I probably, Bill, even felt better about was the, the attitude and the, the confident um, understanding of how much harder that we have to go and the work that needs to be put in to get this going and the willingness to do it. You know, that, that to me is a big part. So, I mean, these players care about each other. They, they, you could see it. They really enjoy being together. Um, they each made a point to say that how much they, they respect each other. And some of these guys have spent time in Rochester and been kind of grown up and um, that's special. Now we have to kind of surround them with the right type of people and, and players and make sure that we're, we're bringing everybody along the same way. Kevin, um, you know, we, we've seen it and we know how frustrated Jack and Sam and Rasmus and we could say Kyle and Zemgis Gergensen and Jake McCabe, the guys that have been here so long and all they've done is suffer through losing, whether it's their fault, it's not their fault, it, it's not all their fault. But they're frustrated, and it, it, it kind of gets into your soul talking to them. You can tell how upset and frustrated they are. So maybe we're not asking you the right question. Maybe the right question is, is it time? Are you maybe looking yourself to trade Jack or Sam? Not because they're bad players, not because they don't produce, because they do, but just because they're in a spot right now that maybe doesn't fit what you're thinking. Well, you know, I think, I think the simple answer to that, Paul, is that uh, we have to be willing as an organization to look at any and all scenarios to help us improve. And I, I think I've been pretty consistent with that message um, and speaking to you guys for almost a year now. Um, we have to be open and willing to look at anything and everything. And I think for where we're at, um, I think you would expect that and the players would expect that and the fans would expect that. So of course, right. Um, but so where we have to be careful is I understand what's gone on here for the last 10 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. I understand the fan base, um, the frustration and it's, it's real. It's, it happened, but we can't wake up and dwell on that. And we can't, look at players and say, um, well, this player can stay or this player can't stay because of how long they've been here. It's more about, are you part of the solution? And do you want to be here? And do you want to be part of something great? And do you want to make this fan base proud or don't you? And if the answer is no, then we'll, then we'll make those decisions, you know? So I, I'm not, I'm not trying to simplify it too much, Paul, but I am trying to just be honest and, and explain it, how I think about that question that you asked me. Hey, Kevin. Um, I guess that begs a follow question. Um, do you have an, in I mean, we got indications from that leadership, obviously on the end of season Zoom calls. I know you said Jack hasn't requested a trade, but in the end of season interviews, those types of things, what messaging did you get from each of them about wanting to be part of the future here? What can you tell us about that? And secondly, what can you tell us about Don Granado's status as interim coach, potentially head coach, and what that process is moving forward. Yeah, so, you know, not obviously going to get into super granular detail of each of my conversations with, with players because, you know, that's not um, – I don't, I don't operate like that. But what I will tell you is every single one of those conversations, there was an honesty both ways, and I appreciate that. You know, I asked some hard questions um, 
players were very honest with me back, which I love. That's, that's a great thing. That's how you, that's how you get better. And um, so those, those, some of those type of questions were asked by me, um, you know, do you want to be here? Is this a place that you see yourself having success? And so when I look at certain um, situations, um, some of it was, Hey, I'm, I, I'm all in. This is the only place I want to play. And some of it was, I'm up for anything, you know? Um, so we'll sort that out. But we have, we have, as probably I've characterized before, I felt like a, a lot of good hockey players that haven't maybe meshed well together and informed what's critically important is buying in some, into something bigger than themselves, which is, is critical for team success. And that's what we have to find. That's the magic, right? So we're going to work hard to do that. Um, so obviously you, you have to give us some time here to work our way through this off season and, and put the roster together. Um, but I do, I'll go back to the young guys. I do feel that there's this light, you know, um, that I kind of feel very comfortable with this, this bright light of these young players that are passionate about being here and, you know, have to me some very exciting upside to their game. You know, that kind of falls in line with, with your second part of your question on Donnie. Um, you know, so I, I guess if, if we're heading that direction, I can just tell you, you know, I think Donnie and the coaching staff did a uh, tremendous job under very challenging circumstances. Uh, you know, the conversations I had with Donnie before the, the decision was made, um, you know, I asked him some hard questions and, and he, he delivered on that. You know, it was a, uh, it was a situation that he he has a lot of experience, guys. You know his track record. He has an experience of um, working with young players. Um, what I think he did very well was crystal clear communication on expectations of how each individual was going to play and what the expectations are from how the team was going to play. And I also don't want to discount how impressive of a performance, in my mind, um, the rest of the coaching staff stepped up. Um, I think Matt Ellis is someone that I've, you guys know, I've known him since I was coaching and he was a player and I always uh, have believed in. And every time I've, I've given um, Matt responsibility, he's exceeded it and done more. Uh, Dan Girardi was someone that I got to know through the hiring process on the player development side, but high character, high work ethic, a, a non-drafted player who went on to play a long time in the National Hockey League and earned everything he got. And I did feel his personality would free up our defensemen in particular. Um, and I think he, he was tremendous, but I also, you know, want to talk about Mike Bales and Miles Fee and Kyle Smith. I mean, these guys all were pros and did so much above and beyond um, what was asked of them under tough. And anytime you have a coaching change and there's, there's relationships there, it's, it's very tough. So I appreciate the work they did to get back to Donnie. Um, we sat down after the season um, quickly discussed kind of where we go from here and we're, we're on the same page. I, I, I told Donnie selfishly, I learned a ton through the search coaching uh, search process. We went through in the American hockey league with Seth Appert ultimately um, being named. I, I talked to a lot of different people, every one of those conversations I learned from. And I, I I've said from the beginning that I want to talk to a lot of people um, with our current situation in Buffalo. I want to, I want to learn. I want to ask questions. I, I just want to talk to a lot of different people with a lot of different backgrounds. So we're going to do that. And, and Donnie totally understood. And I, I think he believes that uh, he's ready and capable of, of being the head coach of this team. Um, and I understand that, you know, he, he did a very good job, like I said, under challenging circumstances. And now we'll go through the process. Kevin, <clears throat> with Jack's comments the other day, he's obviously upset. And it leads a lot of people to believe that the relationship between him and the organization is fractured. So you, you told us what's next in terms of his recovery. But in terms of the relationship, what is next? I mean, do you are there conversations you want to have? Because I'm sure that I don't know if you expected him to go out and, and say that publicly, but there are some things that, that were said that leads a lot of people to believe that, you know, there's trade trade speculation that comes with that. And there's a lot of questions that come with his future. He's the face of your franchise and his future in Buffalo. 
So Lance, just so I understand, is your question more about my relationship or? You and the organization, because I mean, obviously Jack is upset about how this was all handled to the point where he felt it was necessary to come to make those comments publicly. So how do you go about moving forward, you know, whether he stays or goes and um, to try to repair what's obviously been taking a hit here the last yeah. two months? Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll, I'll start with my relationship. You know, I certainly don't don't take any any comments that people make personal um this that's not how i operate um but how i do operate is being very honest and i will never change that i will have honest conversations with everybody um i've told everyone from the beginning you'll always hear the truth from me so if if we have an honest conversation and that gets taken, um, unfortunately, um, the wrong way or becomes contentious, well, then that's, that's, you know, to me, not, not the way we want to handle it. We want to handle things in an honest way where we can trust each other and move forward. So that'll never change. Um, you know, Jack and I have spent a lot of time together. We've had conversations. Like I said, you know, I, I, he's, a, he's the captain of our team. He's a great hockey player. Um, I enjoy Jack, um, you know, where we go from here with us, nothing, nothing's going to change, you know, um, for me personally. So, you know, in terms of the organization, um, I, I think I laid out pretty succinctly and clearly to you what's gone on um, and, you know, understand that maybe people disagree or um, when it comes to these type of things or there can be emotion involved. Um, but that's okay. You know, I think as long as you're staying communicating and you're um, willing to uh, not back down from ever compromising on honesty, then you'll get, you'll find your way to the right spot. And that's just how, you know, my personal kind of belief in that is. Hey, Kevin, after, you know, hearing the comments on Monday, when you hear everything Jack said, and then, you know, uh, Rasmus Ristolainen says, basically, you know, if he's open to anything and if you were to trade him, he'd be fine with that. And then Sam's upset. I mean, that's, you know, your core veteran leadership there. And the perception, you know, on the outside is that there is this dysfunction there. I guess, how do you, how do you go about when trying to get down the line free agents to sign here and bringing in other veteran players or trying to sign, um, you know, high talent down the road. How do you go about convincing other players to come here when it seems like there's, there's a lot of dysfunction and, you know, to go back to Jack's word, uh, disconnect there, I guess. Uh, well, let me try to answer that. The, how I mean, you know, you kind of touched on a few different things. Losing should make people angry. Okay, let's start with that. Um, nobody in this organization should should feel good at the end of the season, regardless of what we went through. Okay, we've talked about excuses before, and you'll never hear that from me. But there is a difference between excuses and facts and reality of some of the things that happened. But in saying that, nobody, I, I really would hope that players weren't sitting there um, excited at the end of the year. We finished in last place, unacceptable, and we're going to fix it. Now, the bigger point to that, Heather, is, well, well how do you fix it? And then where do, what do players around the league think? Well, when you win hockey games and you build things properly and you do things the right way, the league gets small, meaning people talk. In, in people see what's going on and um, they want to be part of something special. So I understand that we have to do that and we have to get to that point where players are lining up to play here because this, this organization is rolling and you're going to get a ch chance to compete for the Stanley cup every, every year. That's what players want. And um, to be honest with you, if a player only wants to play in a city because there's palm trees then that's probably not the type of player we want anyways. So it's about doing things the right way. So your word dysfunction, you know, I, again, I'm not going to live in the past. I'm going to live in where we've been in this conversation of what's going on. And I think I've, I've done that, but I'm going to talk to you guys about how we go forward and how we go forward is people that want to be here and people that want to be part of the solution. If we find people that are willing to do whatever it takes to help this organization succeed we're going to be fine 
in the longer term with this young core of players that we have. We just have to get this right. And um, so I don't really worry about that, but I know there's a process to get there, Heather. Hey, Kevin. Uh, thanks for navigating the rough terrain ter today on all this stuff. Um, you mentioned Eichel's camp had suggested a surgery that had not been done before on an NHL player. And I was wondering, uh, two questions. One, if you could expand on the difference between that and the rehab course that was suggested. And then, you know, you were a longtime player in this league. Uh, to hear a player say, I know what I need to be done to make myself right, but my team won't let me do it. I mean, we've heard that before, but, you know, put on your player cap for a second and, and tell me how you would have felt about that as a player. Well, as a player, let's first of all, I, I would make sure that I was listening to the doctors because whether I was a player or in my current role, <laughs> I don't read MRIs. I listen to the experts, you know, and uh, I, I think that's very important for everyone to understand that um, these are highly regarded medical professionals that all agree on the same thing, that conservative care is the proper step of where we needed to go and we're currently in. So to me, that's, they're, they're, they're very smart people. Um, and it's not just the Sabres doctors, that's also the, the second opinion situation we're in. So um, I think we all agree on that. Now, I don't, you know, honestly, Greg, I don't know if it's, it's, it's helpful to get, you know, super in the weeds on, on the question you asked on, on the surgery and um, that type of thing. But what I can just tell you is it's, it's never been performed on, a, on an NHL hockey player. And I think you could all appreciate that, whether if it was, you know, anyone in any job, but certainly a professional athlete, there's, there's going to be hesitation if there's not data to support um, something like that in a comfort level. And our doctors, um, like I said, just, you know, they're not there. Good morning, Kevin. Uh, I know you mentioned the young core and just how excited you are with sort of their future. I know uh, Donnie spoke with us today and he mentioned how the young core, you know, how they developed under his watch, even though he wasn't the head coach for the full season. I mean, we saw it. I mean, players were given longer leashes. They were given freer reign to sort of play their game in maybe a way they couldn't do earlier this season or last year. As you look towards, you know, either removing the interim tag or getting a new head coach, how important is it, do you feel like, I mean, how much of a quality of sort of developing young guys, do you feel like that's sort of one of the most important qualities that the next head coach of this team needs to have? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question and it's critical. Um, there's so many great coaches out there. And I think one of the keys that maybe doesn't get talked about enough when it comes to a head coach is, are they the right head coach with the team that you have? Are they in the, uh, is their philosophy and the way their expertise, because every coach has positives and negatives, like all of us do. And does that line up with the current construct of your team? And certainly we have a lot of young players. Um, so the development is critical. And one of the, one of the key messages that came out from our young players at the, at the end of the season meetings was they felt like they weren't caught in the middle. They understood exactly what they were supposed to do. And then they felt that they were, they were believed in by the staff, meaning if they made a mistake, you know, they could, they could understand what it was. And now let's go back out there and, and not do it again. Whereas, you know, how this game works, if you're playing on your heels and you're gripping your stick and you're trying not to make mistakes, it becomes, you know, you maybe take your gifts away a little bit. So what you also have to balance is, um, and I've been, and I probably have said this to you before, what I, I've been on both sides of this as a player. I finished on a team that was dead last in the NHL, and I was fortunate enough to win a Stanley Cup. It's a lot different feeling late in the season um, playing in games when you're out of a playoff race um, versus when you have to go into Boston on a Tuesday night and win the game to keep yourself in the hunt. So you have to balance that um, feeling and making sure that our players know that, um, you know, come September next year when it's, it's go time, you know, we have to be prepared to, to push and, and get better. Hey, Kevin, you mentioned a disconnect with the fans and I guess that was never more obvious than when you guys opened the door and not many people came to watch. Um, winning mends a lot of fences, but what else can be done to make this organization matter in the town again? Well, you know, John, I think it's a, uh, there's a connectivity that, and maybe I'm, maybe this is a, 
I, because I grew up here, maybe I can say this more than other people, but there's something special about this town and the sports teams in it, especially when the fans feel it and they love the players and they love the energy. Um, and that's been missing. So now you got to be a little bit respectful of fans in the building. It's a, quite a process this year and, and, you know, how to get them in and all the stuff they had to go through. And so it's a little challenging, but I think your bigger point is right. You know, how, how do we make sure that our, our fan base um, gets excited about our team and we, we have to play that identity. Um, the identity matters. Our fans respect uh, hard work. Our fans respect guys that bleed blue and gold. And that's why these, some of these guys that played here many, many, many years ago are still legends in this town. Um, and that's, that's because of the way they competed and played. So I'm mindful of that. Um, but what I also want to make a point about is, is there's, and I've said this to people in the, in the Buffalo Sabres organization from the business side and all across, um, you know, it's tough when you walk out of here. Um, we want to make this city proud. You know, we have to do our job on the ice as a, as a hockey team to make the city proud. And then that'll start to get our fans excited. That'll empower um, all our employees to walk out and, and feel good about um who you work for and what we're doing day in and day out. And the energy is there. So I think it's, it's not all isolated, John. I think it all kind of works together. Um, but we need to do that at period. And we have some phenomenal people in this organization that care. Um, we haven't even mentioned Terry and Kim right now, th this call yet. And they've done so much for this city and, and put so much into this organization and, you know, I think about it daily. Uh, we need we need to make them proud and to put the the product on the ice that they feel good about as well. So it's it's a heavy question, but it's something that I do think about, John. I understand. Hey, Kevin. I just want to dovetail off John's question a little bit. How do you sell this team right now with a disconnect with an aging building? to sponsors, to sweet holders, to season ticket holders. You know, when you open the doors, you only have less than 400 people coming, buying tickets to come to a game. That has to be a huge red flag. And obviously, on the business side, how do you get sponsors interested uh, when they're more interested in going with the Bills or UB than the Buffalo Sabres at this point? Well, I mean, you have to be honest. Let's start with honesty. Um, you have to be willing to have honest, hard conversations um, and can't be afraid of that. You can't be afraid of, of sitting with people and explaining. Um, we recognize what's gone on. And like, as I've mentioned to you, but you can't dwell and live in the past. Um, we have to do things the right way. And we have to get people to um, understand that this this is going to be something special if it's built the right way with, for the right reasons, regardless of, you know, hard decisions that are made. So, um, but I, you have to look it in the eye. You have to, you, you can't, you can't hide from things. You have to be lean into them and you have to be comfortable with that. And um, if we all have that approach to be a little bit better um, each day in all the different areas of, of our jobs and our life, then it starts to snowball. And I have seen it that, when you get the snowball rolling downhill, it can be powerful. And, you know, that's, that's what we're going to work towards. So fair question, but uh, you know, it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of honesty. Kevin, <clears throat> Kevin, you've been quite transparent on this call about Jack's situation. So I think my question may not totally, Jack may not be part of it, but having said that, how concerned are you? about the need potentially for a comprehensive review of your medical team, your medical staff, your training staff, when you think of all the injuries the club has had, even in recent years before you were in the GM role, Bogosian, you see this year with the problem with Borgen, with the injuries to Allmark, you know, Hutton having a setback. Guys seem to have a lot of setbacks. I've heard from former players there's concerns about the medical team. Jack's situation may not really apply in this question, but how much do you need to look at what you're doing with the, your medical team and training staff, given all these injuries and all the strange things that seem to happen? 
Yeah, well, it's a, you know, part of an overall, you know, organizational review and how, you know, some of those conversations have already happened. Um, just in the last couple of days that I, I've sat with our medical team and our, you know, performance team and, and asked some hard questions and tried to understand. So I think, Mike, what you're trying to um, work through in these type of situations is what could have been prevented and what is just flat out tough, hard luck, right? Like fluky. I mean, you know, two goaltenders with high ankle sprains, like, uh, I mean, we're, we're phenomenal. One of the bright spots of the story is, or of the season is Michael Hauser, but starting your season as the sixth, sixth on your depth chart coming into your lineup, like, could those injuries have been prevented? So it's a fair question, um, but it's a really hard one. So is there a, a review? Absolutely. Are we looking at things that we can be doing um, to help our players to make sure that we're putting them in the best possible position um, from a health wise? Absolutely. Do I have comfort in our doctors? A hundred percent. I mean, these guys, and, and like I said, many of you know them. These are, these are people in this community that you are all well aware of. They are, highly respected, highly intelligent, um, highly educated. And in some, some aspects, one of them is, you know, world renowned in what he does. And, and I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. So it's, uh, it's, it's for me, um, not an issue at all on the, on the, on the doctor piece. Kevin, just want to kind of go with what, you've been answering pretty much for most of the day. Uh, you've talked a lot about the young guys. You've talked a lot about, you know, not looking to the past and things like that, but you did have some people on Monday talk about how they don't want to go through a rebuild. So all that being said, what does this off season look like for you? Given everything that's happened the last couple of days, you've got a young core that you're clearly excited about You've got, like I said, guys that don't want to go through rebuilds. So are you looking at this off season as a team that can get one or two pieces and be back in the playoff race, or is it let's try and use the top pick we have, the draft capital we have, and maybe start from the beginning again and build this team for a playoff run in two years, three years? What's this offseason look like for you in that regard? Yeah, so, you know, you're not going to get me to use that word. It's a, it's a bit of a trap and it's just, it's not because I don't understand it. It's because it's, um, it's, it's challenging to put a timeline on development and, and young players having success. So you have to be a little careful with that. But I think to answer that question appropriately, I do think we have to step back a little bit into why the roster was constructed a certain way this year. And as I've you know said publicly before, there was kind of a, you know, deep dive that went on not long after I, I was in this job on where was our roster? W what could we do to potentially put ourselves in a position to have success? Um, that's why decisions were made to say, hey, let's let's try to build this thing on a respectful short term basis to, to make sure that we're not putting ourselves in a bad spot long term, which we did. And, you know, quite frankly, some of those decisions, you um, I think we're made with the right process for the right reason. And you could argue that um, it just didn't work out, but it doesn't mean it wasn't made for the right reason and the in, inappropriate. So we ended the season in last place. That's fact. So now how do we move forward? We move forward taking another deep dive into how do we position our, our young players to continue to improve and grow and, and develop and how do we insulate them appropriately with the right type of not just player, but person in that locker room? And I, and I you know, and I, I'll make a point on Eric Stahl, you know, D Dylan Cousins said he, he learned so much sitting next to him in just a couple, two, three months that he was, that he'll take that with his, his whole career. He'll have that. So that's important, you know, so how you surround these guys is critical, but putting a timeline on exactly, you know, how that looks or where you go is, 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 is difficult and challenging, but we need to show signs of improving. We need to have the young kids um, continue to grow and get better. And that was part of my message to them at the end of the year too. As soon as you feel in this league that you have made it, it's not good because that's that you lose that one, two, 3% edge 
um, that's not a good place to be. So it's the hunger to continue to grow and to continue to push. Um, and that's what excites me about that young core. So um, we'll build this roster. Um, we have some meetings coming up from, um, you know, ownership level where we'll go through everything from top to bottom, A to Z, and we'll work through that. We will quickly turn our attention into um, obviously the draft and expansion and all of the different things that are going to be coming on um, quickly because we are in mid-May already. And uh, before we know it, we're going to be back at training camp. So that's it's going to be a busy off season, but also exciting. And perspective is important in this. And it's something I think a lot about having that perspective of, um, man, this is also exciting when you kind of think about some of the things that the opportunities that we have in front of us. Um, and I'm excited about that. Uh, Kevin, just two uh, quick questions for you. First of all, just on Jack, is there any way that the decision could change or is that a final decision on what Jack wants to do in terms of the cervical disc replacement? And two, as I read the CBA, the Sabres do have the final decision on what treatment is he is allowed to take. Is that your interpretation of it too? Well, I think the, the key to the first part of the question, Elliot, is we're in that window of that conservative care. And, and, as, I, and as I mentioned, you know, the, the experts uh, have said to us, you know, typically in these situations and their experience with, you know, hockey and football players is um, that there's a, there is a high probability that um, through the rehab and the work that's done um, that you don't need the surgery. So we're still in that window. Um, obviously I kind of laid it out for you and we'll update you all when it's appropriate, um, with the information, um, you know, and in terms of the CBA part, you know, I think it's, it's probably just, you know, for me right now, better to not get into the weeds and the nuances of, of the collective bargaining agreement and all of that. I think the key part is that we're just still Elliot in that, in that, um, conservative care window, and then we'll see where we go from here.